Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Big Bite Baits. Jordan, we're back at it today. Back at it. After a little three-week vacation, we're back on the line, and we're going to talk about Big Bite Baits and a lot of good things to do with our baits and the things that we use them for and that type of thing. Uh, I do want to mention to everyone, uh, if you get, if you got a chance, give us a question in, because uh, we don't have any questions much hanging over from the last time, and uh, we'll, that way we get some, 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 some you know, participation. participation going. That's a good thing, yes. <laughs> And uh, I think we did have one question left over from last time. It was a question about the small about the smallmouth bait that we make that for a drop shot. And I will answer that question. Uh, I give you can give you three baits. I think works real good on a drop shot that we produce. Obviously, the smallest smasher. That's what it's made for. The limit maker works real well as well. And then the three point seven five jerk minnow. Can't go wrong with any of those three baits on a drop shot for smallmouth. So that's something you can take a look at in the book and in the catalog and talk about our online, and that might answer your question that you need. All right, so I thought uh, before we got started today that we might uh, do a little piece of clothing. We have this new piece of clothing right here, and we also have a new zip hood. Well, it's not a hood, it's a zip top. It's a three quarter and a quarter zip. It's got the big bite. I'll show that next week. That's new. That's, that's really nice. And uh, but this is the uh, this is the new cam. I guess you could call this digital camo top with a kind of a monochrome logo in front of it. Looks pretty good. Uh, sells for the same price as our performance shirts do. Um, and something we have out presently that's new. Um, so you know these guys. I know I know two or three guys that sight fish. And they, they, they like to wear camo when they sight fish because they claim the fish can see them. Now, I don't know whether, I'm not much of a sight fisherman, okay? I don't know whether that's true or not, but if that's the case, here's your shirt, guys. Get you one of these. Anyway, I know it sounds kind of crazy, don't it? So anyway. <laughs> no, sounds good. All right, anyway, I just got that out of the way. All right, so today I thought we'd talk about the chatterbait. Because this thing's going to be springtime. Of course, you couldn't tell it outside today. It's like 30 degrees here. But but spring fishing's coming. We all know the chatterbait's real big in the spring. And we all know that we have a, a trailer that we designed. The 4.25 Kamikaze Swim On that is used for chatterbaits. It was a huge success last year. I don't see any reason why it won't be a success this year. And what I did, Jordan, I laid out all those jackhammers with the kamikaze, kamikaze swim on them that we did. And uh, a guy can go crazy looking at all these different colors. So you asked me to pick out three. So I've been telling y'all for years, I'm an old school guy. So I picked out three old school colors today to show everybody I thought would work pretty well. Obviously, the black and blue in muddy water with the black and blue swim on. Can't go wrong in muddy water with that color right there. That's the one. Okay, so definitely spring of the year, good color. Okay, one you can think about. All right, then the second one, old standby is what I'm gonna call this one. If the shatter spawning or just out of general participation, most people throw a white white swim chatterbait with a white trailer on it. Uh, can't beat it. Uh, just a good old standard fish catching machine, basically. And then the third one for bluegill beds, a little later in the year, I like the brim colored one with the with the uh, the, the sunfish laminate skirt on it. So now you got a brim look. So that kind of to me covers the three types of areas that you're gonna throw a chatterbait: muddy water, regular water, brim beds, and that kind of gives you an idea of things to do. And you can choose lots of other things to use. Basically, that that swim bait that swim on comes in 17 colors. So you can even design your own skirt. And I had a guy the other day talk to me about this. I thought it was pretty neat. He he was tying him up a black and red skirt to go on the on the flamethrower one. So he, he likes black neon. So he basically made him a black neon skirt on a black a black chatterbait and put a flamethrower behind it. So you can design your own by just swapping your skirts around. And obviously we got a full gamut of colors. I mean, so colors is not a problem. You can find something to match to make you up something custom if you'd like to. So that's one way you might want to attack it. And then I know some other companies probably have some different colors of chatterbaits as well that you might like to use. But that's kind of the ones we like to pick on. That's the ones I wanted to choose to go over today. Those, if you didn't buy but those three, you can catch fish on them three. They'll, they'll produce, okay? So something to think about. All right, I know you saw you jotting down some questions over there. So talk to me what you got going on, man. Sure. Let's see. I have a few. Cam was wondering the best trailer for a chatterbait but you already answered that one well i mean the swim on is what i like to use mm -hmm. that since that came out that kind of just took over you know up until that time a lot of our, our pros were using like a 
a pro swimmer behind it. Uh, and it works real well too. And sometimes those fish might like that better, but, but it seems like once we came out with a swim on, cause we kind of was the first ones to get this on the market. We saw so many of them, everybody I talked to was using a swim on. So it was kind of, kind of interesting. So I kind of think that's probably the best trailer, but if you want a fallback trailer, then I'd go to a pro swimmer and, you know, and I always try to match it to my bait, obviously. Okay. Now Freight Ninja is wondering how these work on a swim jig. Um, uh, I think the swim on will work real good on a swim jig. If you want a subtle, you know, kind of a subtle approach, it doesn't have quite as much action. Um, mm. But if you want to get it, get it really kicking and make a lot of noise, you go to its cousin, the Kamikaze Crawl, and then you're going to get some action. You're going to get a big flapping, you know, move some water, flapping type action with a lot of, you know, a lot of agitation. So something that you kind of, you know, kind of pick your poison on it, kind of speak deal, you know. And uh, that's kind of what I would recommend for sure. Okay, Brett is wondering, what lures would you use in a muddy winter pond? Uh, you know, I, my favorite cold water bait, and, you know, there's lots of different ones. Uh, a lot of people will look for a reaction bite. Obviously, a chatterbait works really good in cold water. Uh, a rattle trap works really good in cold water because you're trying to get that reaction bait. But I, my, my old secret standby bait would be a craw tube where I can fish it real slow and real subtle in like a black neon color and a muddy color. And that would work real well as well, especially. Okay, we don't have one to show here, but somebody's asking how to rig the smaller size for crappie. Um, you, you rig it basically the same way you would this one, because obviously if you're fishing for crappie, you wouldn't be using quite as big a jig head and big a hook. It'll fit right up on like a crappie jig. Like so a big bite jig? Just like a big bite jig, yeah. You are on a, on a contender jig or either on a, a big, big bite elite jig. Uh, it, it'll, it'll thread right on just like a fat grub wood or any other kind of crappie bait. Definitely. Okay, good deal. I have a good question here from Carson. Okay, Carson, talk to me, man. He's wondering if we sponsor high school fishing clubs. We do, and, and how you do that is you need to get your coach to call in a big bite and get you signed up. He can sign the whole team up, and then we have some incentive programs that we do for high school students that fish and would love to have you to participate. So you need to go back to your coach and talk to him about it and get him to handle it. He needs to pick up the phone call and they'll, they'll give him, you know, basically what he needs to do to be able to get signed up to get his team where they can participate. All right, here's a good one from Scott. He's wondering, would love to know the best color for murky slash dark water. Uh, you know, as a rule of thumb, just talking with our guy, with our pros and talking with other fishermen I know, most fishermen go dark in cold in 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 in, in dark water. If the water's you know red muddy, I don't know how your water uh, turns when it rains a lot. Here it gets orange because of the red clay. Obviously, we'll go to a dark color. Your black and blues, your black neons, something that's a really dark makeup seems to work the best. And and so that's what I would recommend is going to a dark type color for sure. Okay, that's all the questions I have. Well, that's super, man. We appreciate those questions coming in too, by the way, because we were a little shorthand on info today, and that that helped to make things go a lot better. And y'all keep them coming every week. That's that's obvious. I like to spend more time as, answering questions than I do talking, so that works pretty well. But uh, until till next week, get your chatterbaits, get them ready. Spring's on the way. Three killer colors. Y'all have a good day.